Hey everybody, welcome back to a Krita tutorial. Today we're going to continue our Getting Started Introduction to Krita two-part series. So this is the second video. If you haven't watched the first one and you want to get used to Krita or try it out or you're brand new, go back and take a look. It is the last video. I will try to remember to link it in the video or in the description. Forgive me if I do. Feel free to remind me if I do forget. Sometimes I just get caught up and forget to add links. So last time we went over the basic user interface, just like a quick overview, nothing too advanced. Today we're going to go over a little bit more. So we're going to look at the dockers real quick because there's a lot here in my default workspace that I have made myself that you won't see when you first open Krita. So we're going to go to settings and dockers and I feel like this is something I've said a million times by now because I went over every single docker within Krita. Um, including the new ones that are most recent. So here you can see there is a ton of stuff to go over, like a lot. We have artistic color selector, we have comics manager, compositions, gamut masks, storyboards, symbol libraries, undo history recorder, all this crazy stuff. All of this has a video already. So if you see something that kind of like perks your interest, go search that on my YouTube channel and watch that video. If there's something in the video that uh, you need answered still that maybe I don't go over or you have more further questions about it, feel free to leave them either in this video or within that video itself in the comment section. So a lot of this stuff um, is going to be on a need by need basis. You know, not everyone's going to need all this stuff. Um, what I have open is the quick settings docker right here. And that's just so I can quickly go over different sizes of my brushes. I actually do use this a lot for um, a multitude of reasons. Uh, if I'm doing some flats in my colors, if I'm erasing, I just need a bigger brush. Um, or maybe I need a finer point uh, line than what I have by default, which is a six. And that's what I use. I have the overview so I can see the entire illustration here and I can zoom in here which has a larger zoom radius than here on the pop-up palette. And that's why I have it. So if I go here, you can see it stops and I can continue to zoom in here. I have the tool options. So every time I click on one of these tools here, you can see the tool option docker changes. I definitely want that open because everything has such an in-depth, like total setting options over here and I have gone over these tools as well each one has its own video or own section has its own video there's just so much here that you can do um, so if you are doing some shapes you can actually change all the shapes here uh, filled not filled outline you can say what you want the brush to be the brush the background color or the main brush color so right now blue is the foreground black is the background background means black uh, there's just a ton of stuff in here. Um, recommend go looking up those uh, videos. Uh, I have layers in here, which are really good to know. Uh, you have your different settings for these layers within the little pizza box icon. Some people call them something else. I don't remember though. You can do a new layer down here. Tons of stuff. Have videos on it. Go watch those for more in-depth information. But that's where you basically are going to go find more options and more tools that aren't immediately visible when you first start Krita. Um, I recommend getting familiar with the grids and guides, the, the artistic color selector, selector, the digital color mixer, and there was a new one that they put out. Um, I think it was, oh, the wide gamut color selector, which they will be switching to permanently. Uh, I just haven't made the switch myself. You're going to love this. I have a video on that as well definitely go get familiar with that. And that's kind of like a quick overview of the dockers, where you can find them, or where you can open them, and how you can bring them out um, into your own workspace. Now when you go to open them, I'm going to just open compositions. Sometimes they are automatically docked within the uh, user interface here, and sometimes they're floating out here. You can just go ahead and put that wherever your heart desires. As you can see, a lot of programs have a similar um, workspace environment. If you want it to be in the tab, you can just put it over another one and you can have a tab section. 
And then if you want it to stay there forever, you can lock it so you can't accidentally click it and drag it off, which I have done many a time. <laughs> and then if you don't want it there anymore, you can just close it and it won't show up again. Some of the dockers will say visible when you close Krita and open it back up. Um, my comics manager is one of those, so I'm actually gonna open that up. Now, dockers, comics manager. It's mine stay, well, usually stays here. But I reset my interface, so it didn't stay there. And I can go through for my comic and take a look at that. Now, if I close this, it's gonna stay there and stay visible, which is very helpful for me. Personally, because when I open Krita and this project isn't open, I can just open it there and open the page from here directly. So just keep in mind that some dockers will stay visible even when you close the document that you're working in. Another is the brush customization. This is a very, not complex, but it is a very, um, without thinking of a better word, it is complex. <laughs> it is pretty robust. Um, there's a lot of settings you can change in here for your brushes. You can choose something that's already made and tweak it here if you'd like. You can also test out the brush here. I'm using my mouse right now just because it's easier to make this kind of video with the mouse. Um, you can test the brush settings there and then you can delete them. You can keep tweaking the settings and all that good stuff. Um, so I have videos on that. Um, I do have a little mini series about it as well to make a custom brush, which is kind of rough um, in terms of like, it's not a perfect brush, but just to give you an idea of what can be done. Um, they've been updating this brush editor for a very long time. Um, it is, it, it's, I love it. You know, I've been able to tweak things as needed. Um, this is usually where I live for my settings, but occasionally I will um, play with some of these options down here. And then we're going to go over just um, quick palettes. So I'm going to open the Docker. Oops, wrong one. That's patterns. Palette. All right. We also have some palettes here you can use. And these are going to be workable with this color selector. Um, you also have a history of colors that you can pick that show up here on the side. And you have that showing up in the ring around this color selector as well. So there's some things that you might need off the bat. And then the most important one is the resource manager within Krita. So we have two options, which is manage resource libraries and manage resources. So resource libraries, these are all the things that I've personally imported within Krita on my computer to try out to play. The red ones are my custom ones where if I'm, if something happens to my computer, I've saved um, my custom brushes basically as a backup and then I have to re-import them if I have to reinstall Krita or something stupid happens with my computer which has happened twice now. So I recommend doing that. I have videos on that as well about how to save bundles, import them, all that good stuff. And then some of these I have imported from other Krita artists for um, custom brushes. I have a Mojo Moo Ink which is basically comic stuff, Grass and Fields brush pack which is another Krita bundle. And I, it's just nice to have the ability to bring in other things from other artists. So that's where you can see all the things I've managed. So what I can do is I can activate it or I can deactivate it. And that basically means deactivating means it, it's just, it's still within my resource library, but it is no longer accessible with brush presets and things like that. I'm gonna close this. And here I'm gonna go to manage resources. Here's where we want to create the bundle, kind of see what we have going on already. Um, tons of stuff. Uh, if you're not making anything already, which you probably won't be because if you're new, it's not going to be there. Um, you won't have to worry about this. But once you get more comfortable with Krita, you may want to um, create something yourself and share it with other people or maybe put it on another computer or just create a backup, this is where it would be. You can go to create that and brush presets and all that good stuff. Um, so you have local resources and you can go um, by the actual bundle, which is nice. So maybe you like all of these from Mojo Moo Ink, but you're like, I only use this row of brushes, so I'm just gonna create my custom bundle 
of brushes I use from this and say, when I go to another computer, for example, and I want to bring my work with me, I can say, all right, I need these tools and these two tools only, and this is what it's going to be, and I don't have to worry about everything else and dragging everything else over. So you can do that too. And the last thing within the creator, we're going to go to settings and toolbar shown, and these are going to be everything up here. So as you can see, I turned on edit, and that shows my undo options right here. I have choose workspace, undo, and redo. These are my mirror and wrap tools, like I said in the last video, and then the brush options. So if you don't want to show the brushes and stuff, we can take that off and completely minimize it. If you don't want to show file, you don't want to see that. But I like all of that um, open, <laughs> so we're gonna turn that back on. There we go. And mainly because I like a quick um, save button. If I don't hit Control S to save, I'm hitting the button. Because sometimes when you're working on your tablet or whatever it is, um, it's just faster for me to move my tablet pen to the save icon than it is to go to the keyboard sometimes. Um, but if you don't want any of that on, that's where you can go turn that on and off. I will note if you go to turn on the edit, your workspace button is going to move over here. And it's not going to stay over here. I don't know why that is specifically, but that's where it gets moved to. All right, and that is it for this two video mini series. Um, hopefully this, these two videos give you an idea of how to get started in Krita, where all the stuff is, where to start looking for things, um, how to start getting familiar with everything in Krita, and um, yeah, showing you a bunch of stuff to go start exploring. Like I said, I have a video for just about everything within this program on my YouTube channel, both new and old. I would recommend go watching those videos. If you have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments on those part in those specific videos or in the comments on this video below. I'll do my best to help you and answer those questions. Um, it's a very, very robust program. There's a lot in here. I've been using it for years and I love it. <laughs> So thank you for watching this video. If you want to make sure you're up to date on everything within Krita and you're getting the best information, tutorials, all that good stuff, make sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on those tutorials. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.